and welcome to the seventh episode of Tell It All Podcast. My name is April Mahase and this is the show that brings you mind-blowing conversations with prominent people across the country. And of course, we always keep it right to the T. Our guest today is all bringing about sass, about drama, about gorgeousness. Hey, yes, of course, you already know. <laughs> this is none other than Ino Matijane Matijone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like. I mean, she's a DJ, mm-hmm. a reality TV show star, okay, a musician, a brand ambassador, an influencer, just to mention a few. And today she is here on Tell It All to actually do exactly that. Tell it all. Please, ladies and gentlemen, help so me nice welcome the one and only Eno. Hi, babes. Hi. I said, hey, you look so good. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank you I'm so sad. much. You know what? I feel like you're the first person to actually compliment my looks on the show. Really? Yeah, You know air. what? You deserve it. Because why am I on a seventh episode and not the first episode? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You Drama. Look what did I say? <laughs> you know, you how are you, good. baby? I'm all right. Thanks. You look yourself. absolutely stunning oh, as thank always. You. I tried. Yes, you are. <laughs> Modesty, you are in. Look, I man, tried. thank you so much for coming mm-hmm. on to Tell It All. Are you thank ready? You for me. To I tell am. It all? I mean, look, uh, people that know me know. Yeah. Like, I never leave anything out. One That's thing about me, I'm going to, you know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All right, now let's start off with something that's just gonna uh, help us to break the ice, like we normally do here at Tell It All. There are questions yeah. that we ask just to, like, you know, relax and get acquainted with each other. Okay. Question one here is What is the one thing that Ino makes sure that she doesn't leave? at home wherever you go out to anywhere be it a, a show that you're going to a wedding any kind of event or oh, whatever just going out to town to the market it's my fragrance hey baby girl like, what do you mean yeah. it's all a compliment it's all a compliment i know it, just, it gives me you know all the frills but I yeah know. my definitely my fragrance Actually, i think i have one in the bag yeah or my oils just to smell good when people give me hugs you know so they know that I'm not just a pretty face. I smell nice. Hello. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I smell it nice over here. Another thing that I want to know is that uh, before we get into the business, is like uh, if you were to, if we were to write a book about your whole life. Please don't. Yes. If you were to write a book about your whole life, what would be the title? Uh, not so innocent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is Tell It All, brought to you by Genuine Hype. It's the only place where you're going to get all this juice. So you know what to do. Subscribe onto our channel. We're on Facebook as well. Genuine Hype, Tell It All. That's where we're at, baby. We've got the one and only celebrity in oh, the thank building. You. I don't come on, but... Ah. You know how people are very like sensitive about the celebrity thing? Yeah, they are actually. And I'm like, damn, I've been working so hard. You're telling me I can't deserve that title. <laughs> <laughs> You've been working so hard. My Speaking speak of itself. working, you yeah. heard that. Speaking of working very hard, look, I want to know that where you're from, like, where are you from? Who is you know? Where you from? Where you where you raised <sighs> to be this person that you are today? I am from Lesotho, obviously. Yes. Uh, I was born here, and then at a young age, my mom took me to schools in South Africa mm-hmm. and then that's where socialization, socialization excuse me began mm-hmm. um, that's where a lot of my time was that side versus this side so this is literally the first time coming back in the country I was raised in few places here actually funny enough I was everywhere but very okay. stable yeah uh, coming from a very great family mm-hmm. um, honestly I'll be lying if I didn't say I had everything that I wanted but yeah. I wasn't like wealthy but yeah. my mom made yeah, sure yeah, yeah. I know um, what you mean. I know what you mean. You understand? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's basically me. I'm so tall. I'm so tall. I'm like, I'm so tall. Oh, for a long. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. So yeah. that's you. Yeah, that's right. Me. Now you mentioned that you grew up in South Africa most of the time. Now I recall that you uh, were once here it's, uh, when you were maybe maybe it was a visit. I don't know. Maybe mm. for a short period or something like that. You were part of a group. But you were part of a group. Yes. Was that? I was so messy. Yes, girl. You were part of a group, uh, PBC, which was like pretty, uh, pretty boys pretty club. Pretty boy group. Pretty, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, and um, that was like the biggest crew that. in the country. Just by the way, mm-hmm. like that was like the wildest young. Not even young, like young kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, we're true. killing it. People we used to hate on. Mm. We used to wear like 
Supras, I think that those are the names. Sorry if I'm mentioning brands that I'm mm -hmm. not supposed to. Mm -hmm. Like, we used to no, just no, be no. like a family and unity. Yeah. And we're still together, funny enough. Like, yeah. we hang out. Yes. Uh, obviously, we have grown. Uh -huh. uh, some of us have families. Some of us have babies. Mm -hmm. So, it means that we're spending less time around each other. But when we get an opportunity, we're always, like, together. Yeah. So, yes, I was with PBC, but I was still in South Africa at the time. So, I would come to Lesotho, like, during the holidays. You were the IT club. Let me... Hey, <laughs> okay, yeah, um, yeah. The PVC basically was like a, a a musical crew that was introducing, you know, something different in Lesotho at that time. I think it was around 2010, 12. Oh it was a long God. time ago, man. For real, I've yeah. been being famous. Yeah, now. yeah. You, 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 you. <laughs> listen. Right about those times, I remember PVC <laughs> had a a show, and I was the host, and I was like, "What's going on? All What's of these, going? All of these oh. pretty boys." Yeah. And listen, we were pretty, hey. 100%. Except for I, I'm I'm not a boy anymore, but okay. But we used to. Have ladies also we used to have Is ladies it? yeah i know that uh, uh a friend of mine Dean also Paul, jess yes jess, jess, jess one of my favorite people love her i want to i want to go back Mopsy. to something that you said that i know it's like the elephant in the room from for for a lot of us <laughs> like uh you're not a boy anymore so i want to understand something like help me understand this what is it like uh um uh, uh, like what? How was the transition? Like how did you? Or what was the journey through discovering your your gender identity? Sure, not an easy one. Obviously, yeah. uh, I think mm, it starts going back to you know trying to figure out the type of person you were as a young kid. Mm -hmm. I went through so much traumatic experiences as a kid. I can imagine a lot of homophobia and. How long are you innocent? How do you know why about we are not going to be able to do anything? So what used to happen is I used to follow my sister cousin around her name and go. I'm just listening. I'm I'm listening to you speak now. I'm looking at you. You look so pretty. Like oh, I know I'm serious. Like stop it. You look so pretty. <laughs> Thank you. Go on. Go Thank on. you. So I used to follow my sister cousin around. Mm -hmm. At that time, not really about. Um, still are. Yeah. <laughs> and how she managed to follow up and to follow up all that thing. I used to be around the girls, never yeah. used to do like masculine things. Yeah. When I was like, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I used to be so pissed that I wasn't a woman. You were yo, like, yo. You don't get what I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm so jealous. But at that time, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. You're just feeling those emotions. Mm -hmm. That's you don't know what's happening. You know, because as a kid, you don't know what's gay. You don't know what's trans. You know how you're feeling inside, but you really haven't really figured it out. Yeah. So obviously, uh, I think long story short, um, I I was I believe I was gay as a young kid. Uh, okay. I used to wear dresses. I used to find joy in playing with the dolls with my sister. Love her to bits. Mm -hmm. And at one point, people started being like, why are you wearing dresses? Yeah. Why are you playing with only women? You should play with guys. And, blah, blah. and obviously, when you were a kid and people are being so prejudiced against you, at one point, you're like, oh, maybe this is not the right thing to do. Maybe because mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, if I am feeling these emotions, then clearly everyone should be feeling like this. You know, everyone wow. should have feelings for the same so gender. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to say because when when i act a certain way or behave a certain way it looks like it's a problem right so obviously that is one of the traumas that you're not starting to encompass yourself with because you're like what the hell is wrong why mm. why are people why do people have an issue with the way i am well but when i live with and those things try to make you have different decisions in your life so then i decided you know what it wasn't a decision i just went yeah. with it i was like Okay, in a normal society, you need to have a girlfriend, you need to have a wife, and yeah, it's an, have a nuclear society, family. Yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly what I did. And then we'll date girls. And to be honest, fun times. I don't regret. I used to be a player. Okay. And Hello. I, and I don't regret it because I used to date like the hardest girls in schools. And of that's course, why Mary I had mean, a little hey. lamb. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of being with the girls, but I obviously knew that was not it. You. That was not enough. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew that. My feelings are more than what I'm portraying or what I'm leaving right now. And low key, I'll be on the net, you mm -hmm. know, uh, looking out for gay information, yeah, yeah, yeah. anything that could make me feel validated for the way that, that I feel. And obviously, you go through high school feeling the way that you are dating girls. And long story so, uh, short, um, went into a reality show, mm -hmm. uh, identified myself as a gay man, mm -hmm. and later on realized, no, this is not who I am, man, you know? And that obviously is because of uh, the, the trans woman that I was around that I could see myself in. Mm -hmm. At first, I was in denial. I would be like, mm, what are you? Okay. You know? Yeah. But then later on, I'm like, 
no man this is how i feel this is that little kid yeah. that people said you can't wear dresses you can't be like a girl and da, 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 da. and if people gave me the freedom and an opportunity to be myself maybe i wouldn't have went through so many confusing uh transitions of who i really am but eventually mm -hmm. i'm glad i found myself and yeah hey I'm and i love it girl i mean look at you Thank being all confident me. out here on posters doing stuff of course i'm just trying to understand also when you're going through all of this like you obviously you had your friends back then mm -hmm. and your family right mm -hmm. and you are now now transitioning into this person that you are now um like how was how was it for them like how, how did they receive the whole transformation your friends at pbc uh your 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 family and everybody <laughs> else around you like how how was it for them but so taking it back as a gay man mm -hmm. then it was still a shock for me to come out gay because for most people not the ones that i grew with not mm -hmm. the ones that saw me as a kid yeah. because those ones they saw that that mm. a, so for me being myself now, the ones that I grow with oh, so from a young age. So basically, during that time of, I'm um, sorry, sorry to to do that. You, during the time, there was a time when you had to pretend, to, to you know, to pretend to be an actually to be a, 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 a guy guy because you felt pressure. Huh. <laughs> I don't know if I was pretending because I was still going to Joburg to get some dick, girl. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, because there was a time when I was in high school and I would yeah. travel to Joburg to go get you know what, what I, I was you saying. Know? But Pew. there was fear yeah. of exposing too much of who I am. Mm -hmm. Was I pretending? Maybe not. Because at that time, you're exposed to a certain social structure. Yeah. And obviously, they will emphasize a specific or particular behavior on you. Mm. This is how you act as a man. This is how you speak as a man. This is what you did. Da, da, da. Like mm. I said, you have to have a nuclear family, etc and that's what i did for me that was a normal way of leaving mm -hmm. even though that i know there was a part of me that i'm leaving out i ended up you know just finding myself in a position where i had to do things that i would not be judged for yeah. even though yes in those particular moments that's how i would be feeling the girlfriends that i dated i mean there's trans lesbians i actually did yeah. like them so i don't want to lie and be like mm, i didn't, didn't like the girl that i was yeah. with for me it wasn't the thing of i'm trying to use you to you know to hide my sexuality because then i would have not been in a relationship and okay. not put myself through that right. i honestly feel like the relationships that i, w I was in mm -hmm. i genuinely genuinely enjoyed some of them. Yeah. However, in those relationships, I was Ooh, like, you I know, you're so naughty. Like, this is just giving me <laughs> both a certain shade of hot pot, hot chicken, 50 grains of somebody somewhere. Look, you're just giving me vibes, man. Like, <laughs> like I'm like being honest with you. But at, at that point, it's also, so I knew that you know, you <laughs> there are a lot of trans yeah, lesbians. True. They mm -hmm. really are. Uh, but then I, I, I knew that, hey, you know, I'm not until we young. Can I get like a Nike belly girlfriend? It's like, but you hope a lot of my repeater. You know what I'm saying? Do you get what I mean? I knew and it. I think I just went through my emotions as they were coming to me. I wasn't thinking about them deep. I wasn't hiding. Yeah. I just felt like it was none of anybody's business. I was, wow, I've, that is I've always so been great. a very nonchalant and confident kid. So, what you have to know, you'll know. What you don't have to know, you mustn't know. It's up to me. I really want to know how you were able to do that because i know there's a lot of people out there who are struggling with you know having the confidence that you do have right now like how did you get to you know saying what well, you know what it's my business and i'm doing it anyway try my babes yeah. <laughs> and i'm not even trying to be you have to this. go through it to be yeah, yeah like yeah. you just at one point you're like enough like mm -hmm. i'm so tired of you know all this hate narratives i'm so tired of being labeled mm -hmm. i'm so tired of people feeling like they have a say about who and how, who I should not be. Wow. So at one point you get really tired. Did I expect it to turn out this way? No, absolutely not. I don't want to lie to you because mm -hmm. also I am from a very uh, religious rooted family. Yeah. My mom is in, was into God like forcefully like you need to pray and I'm, ex I'm exactly like that and I'm very grateful that she instilled mm -hmm. that in me. Yeah. But obviously it wasn't easy for me to also like become myself just because of the backgrounds where I come from. The country that I come from, Lesotho, I mean we're still very much uh, conservative. Mm -hmm. That's progress but mm -hmm. we're still conservative. Yeah. Um, religious background and just the fact that I had already now perpetuated a behavior that I cannot maintain. Mm -hmm. And what do I mean by that? Yes, Being in relationships with girls mm -hmm. when I know very well that I'm not fully present there. As much as it might have been fun, as much mm -hmm. as it might have been something that I thought like it was necessary at the time, I wasn't fully present in those, uh, you know, relationships. Mm -hmm. And at one point you're like, you know what, I just got to do what I got to do. But everything happened not with a plan, but it, it just played out the way God wanted it to play out. I, I, I started doing 
skits okay. uh, videos on social media before we get to those skits which i'm gonna get to that mm -hmm. part i want to also ask you because i follow you on, on facebook yeah. and instagram whatever whatever yeah. I'm, I'm on i'm on you baby girl <laughs> now i want i saw a post that you made yesterday last night somewhere here. Uh, you said something like um uh that you are not gay you are a trans woman so what exactly <sighs> is gay and what is trans woman? okay my definition might be very loose of course you no learn worries. about yourself as you go but this is my own understanding and i feel like a lot of trans women do relate the same yeah um when you're gay you are someone who was uh born with their assigned gender mm -hmm. uh whether it be it a uh, man and woman okay and you have an attraction uh to the same gender so if you're a man you'll be attracted to the same man if you're a woman you'll be attracted to the same woman mm -hmm. and that's just it okay. uh it's basically centered around attraction and your feelings and how you feel for that person mm -hmm. with transgender it's a bit deeper than that a lot of trans people like myself they start off actually being gay until they realize oopsie gay. Mm -hmm. you are born with an assigned gender and you feel a certain inside of you mm -hmm. where you feel very womanly your mental is just operates of that ident or gender that you identify with yeah. like everything in you just doesn't align with who you are outside so yeah. the beards that you have um not having breasts etc mm -hmm. it's just you hate the body that you are in okay. and i always thought that i was accepting of my body i used to be like even on the show now nah, i'm gay that's it mm -hmm. but then i didn't realize that some of responses could be a traumatic response yeah and because at one point you get to a point where you don't love yourself fully for who you are because of how just people have been unkind to you and mm -hmm. you don't want anything to do with that so mm -hmm. i didn't realize that mentally i was deassociating from so, who okay. i really am because of the fears because of the prejudice because of the a lot of things that i experienced discrimination in my mm -hmm. society in schools wherever that i went mm -hmm. so that's why i was in denial i was like oh no i'm just gay i'm perfect i love my so, beards yeah so basically being trans is uh trans means uh i didn't get that part exactly because i I'm just feeling like gay. you're born in the wrong body uh-huh all right do you understand i get that part. how you feel inside uh -huh. does not align with how you look okay outside okay so everything of mine inside is woman they didn't choose it mm -hmm. i'm god's creation you mm -hmm. can't i, I don't know how yeah, to exactly as a feather but speaking, yeah fully uh -huh. fully one woman so speaking of inside that's inside of you that's how you feel and everything that you do like whatever you do reflect exactly a, how i a, think a my behavior exactly how you um, speak everything hating your private now, partner like what speak yeah that's, where I, was, that's where I wanted it to get to it should be stable it must stand why is it moving <laughs> why are you Ooh, moving okay. babes like look, here's my question <laughs> <laughs> here's my question so now look uh obviously you were you were you were more of a guy before and you now you literally are a woman like no i want to still have woman. your 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 you yeah, still have your 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 male part for safety i can't disclose that okay and i'll tell you why i don't have a problem with disclosing it but because my transition have been centered around that mm -hmm. i saw the risks that came with it in the comments where oh do you now have a new vagina i want to taste that yeah, yeah. and i want to da so it has become very unsafe for me and even yeah. if i can say no i haven't done that then it becomes that a thing where scary. okay we need to get rid of you because you must be possessed if you still have you like your male genitalia yeah. like what the hell is that we don't have that in a society yeah. so it's very scary for me mm. especially considering the fact that i'm in lesotho mm, exactly. to disclose such however to answer you there are trans women that end up doing uh reassignment surgery removing their private parts mm -hmm. to the one that they identify with so you mm -hmm. get a lot of trans women who were born men and then they'll obviously transition and go through reassignment surgery and uh get a female private part or Girl. women's private part even for vice versa even for both for men and women yeah i have a friend who's a trans man mm -hmm. uh, he has full fleshed beards mm -hmm. and he's totally a trans man but for me uh that is something that i cannot disclose I, I, I really understand for yourself for i can you go know. as far as because of how people sexualize me it's yeah. very risky yeah do you understand what i mean mm. already people it's like not even me like community is trans community we 
we are treated like fetishes. Like a lot of men, they're like, ooh, mm. if I can just get you, mm. if I can just undress you, do you get what I mean? And that's very unsafe. Yeah, so you get people like that here at home? Like, Sana. I want this, I want I, I get men unsolicited sending me DMs that their penises in my, do you get what I mean? And I'm like, ooh. oh my goodness. But because we are treated like a fetish, because we are treated like a sex commodity, mm -hmm. people don't see us or most, I guess those, yeah. few people they don't deem it as human beings yeah. they think oh because i'm trans um i'm a working pawn you know i want to sleep with every guy mm. or i don't respect myself mm. etc and nothing against sex workers and yeah. we'll get into that but you do get women who go through all of that and whether or not i went through that i don't think it's relevant yeah. however i i have started my home home um replacement therapy my hormone replacement therapy hrt home on replacement hormone Oh, hormone replacement therapy. Yes, HRT. What is that? Hey, what's HRT, HRT because HRT? I feel like I'm born in the wrong body. What's HRT? Hormone replacement. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm you're explaining. You're explaining. Okay, go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, juicy, juicy. I can't. Yeah, what about that? You know, it's weird. I mean, I this is stuff that we don't know, and we like this is this is amazing. Yeah. That you're, yeah. Yeah, because you feel like you're born in the wrong body. Mm -hmm. You're so desperate. You go through what is called gender dysphoria, which I went through. I think for two years, and according to my counselor, if you go through gender dysphoria for two years, then that is bad. You need to see someone. And that's exactly what I went through. Um, where you start feeling like, I hate my beard. Mm -hmm. I don't like my penis. Um, yeah. I want to have breasts. I want to, oh and goodness. not because of, I know there's a new narrative of trans people could be that they identify with other genders besides what they were assigned with because they sexualize and that gender. and it has nothing to do with that i don't want to i'm not saying oh i want to be a straight woman because straight women yeah. are sexy yeah. it's like you just want to be when you. i look in the mirror i don't identify with what it's on me mm. it makes me sick it makes me depressed maybe it's a mental illness i'm not saying it is yeah. and it's very risky and dangerous for me to even make this assumption but i'm making it because i'm trying to make people to understand how they you don't choose that this is who you're going to be. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And when you start hating yourself, it's a matter of life and death. Are you going to take the necessary precaution steps to attain the better self that could give you happiness? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to remain depressed, suicidal, not happy with yourself? So HRT, that's where it comes into place. Yeah. So every man and woman have testosterone and estrogen. Mm -hmm. What dominates in you is estrogen. What dominates in a straight uh, man or man in general is testosterone, whether straight or not. So when you take HRT, and I'm saying that I identify as a trans woman, it means that I need to do what? Lower my testosterone and increase my yeah. estrogen to match or even closer to the level of your estrogen. Mm -hmm. In that process, what happens? It deals with my gender dysphoria. It deals with the hate that I have for myself. Oh it my starts God. minimizing. Oh my goodness, you need to stop saying that. No, 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 no. it's true. That's what trans women, it's, it's really real. That's, it's, I just don't understand how a person can live their life you know, exactly. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's just That's like, why it's so cruel when people is. are transphobic because they don't know. Right? Like, I'm, babes, like, I'm like you at first. I hate myself first, mm -hmm. but like, get to know me. Do you get mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I didn't choose this. Yeah. Anyway, um, what a hormone does, if I, I need to take uh, hormones that obviously align with a woman's, mm -hmm. which is estrogen, so then it will inhibit my beard growth. It will have, I'll have breast development. Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Of course I do girl, come on now. Girl, so talk with it. Exactly. Hey. So obviously I start developing uh, body features or parts yeah. that I feel identify or represent mm -hmm. how I am and how Stand I the feel. Thighs over here. So, no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely not. Let me explain that. Okay. okay? Because this was a whole conversation. Yes. Literally, ask anyone that has known me from birth. I've always been the baddest bitch alive. Hello. And this body is literally <laughs> surgery Natural. from God. Wow. Do you understand? I understand. Yes, hormones does change your body. But also when it does change your body, it's not like intense. Mm. It's literally like minimal changes. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mostly, it's always at the breast versus than your, uh, your body. Because oh. if you look at other trans women, if... The body that I have was a result of hormones purely. Mm -hmm. Then it would mean that every trans person who's on hormones and taking estrogen, they should have the body that I have. But it's not the case. Ha, maybe Do you, you had the I'm... money and you went somewhere. And exactly. No, babes, I wish I did have that kind of money. <laughs> Thank you for the vote of confidence. <laughs> Hey, yeah. But no, I didn't do anything. And yeah. I only started my hormones like two months ago. And for the wow, hormones you to don't see... Say. Exactly, for hormones to see differences of in your body or on your body rather, it takes like 
a long time it can take mm. a year to two years mm -hmm. of course you see some stuff i don't know why breasts develop very easily i guess mm. it's the tissue around it mm -hmm. but they develop uh quicker than your body and your body structure cannot change hormones yeah. do not does not affect your bones what you're seeing here babes it is apple oh. do you understand and that is something that you can't buy <laughs> yeah. that is something that you can't create yeah. through hormones yeah. so i've always been a thick uh, girl, yeah. because even when I was a kid, I'll get bullied for it. But well, they didn't know it was bullying. Honestly, it was innocent from them, but it came across like not nice. Mm -hmm. uh, people would be like, I'm fine. I don't know why I'm not going to be a kid. I've always known me for a while. Even when oh, yeah, I was skinny, I get, I get you what would you see. Saying, Come on. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? You yeah. would see that I was just skinny and I just gained weight. And that's yeah. what it is. And if you look into my family, we all have body types like this. Mm. Will homies make changes to my body? Absolutely, but super minimal. And I don't even think here because my doctor told me you're already thick. So for the hormones to make any changes to you, it's going to be so difficult because you already have that womanly figure. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. For some people that don't have a womanly figure, perhaps if we had to uh, measure it with body types and if you are slim, it's going to be like, a little, little bud. It's not yeah. going to be like you mangas like mine. So no. No, but it's I banging. I Let I me tell you, it's banging. Uh, thank you. Yes. Babe. I appreciate it. But I haven't done, uh, and Nothing, it's funny because I used yeah. to hate it and I spoke about this on my no. show. We, I literally used to hate my body. Mm. But I got to attempt to accept it because now obviously like the BBL type of bodies or thick bodies came into fashion now. And I was like, let me shine. Really? Let me shine. Okay. And I started embracing <laughs> myself, not knowing and embracing myself. I started yeah. loving my body. I'm but so no, happy that I haven't I done any surgery mm. babes i don't even have any because that's what happens mm. obviously i know how it works okay. i haven't done that i have considered doing that at yeah, one point yeah. but no i haven't no. this is all no, natural. i'm glad you didn't do it because it's, it's also a bit like risky and stuff like that isn't it, it is yeah. and people will say to me can you get the injection and i'm like babe I've, I've seen if you, on if you your google wall, that there's a lot of people that actually like if you like google you've what done some the sort of bad fillers mm. and injections that to you you could potentially, they put your health at risk. Yeah. You can get blood clots, you can die. Mm. You have Nicki Minaj and all these people advising people don't do it. Yeah. And why would I put And like. usually a butt injection butt is usually way bigger than this. Because I don't know the internet and go, yo, sister, where did you go? Because I don't want to go. You get what I mean? <laughs> I feel <laughs> you. you. Know what I mean? Nothing okay. against that. Okay. Thank you so much for all that clarification. Like it, it, it was. Just, no, my body's real. It, <laughs> we like real that. As like. Now I have a funny question that I want to ask you. Like it's really funny. It's on my mind. Um, obviously, um, uh, uh, you you sometimes you know feel you know excited and stuff like that. When you do feel that way. What are you talking about, April? <laughs> like excited. What are you saying? <laughs> Like, what do you, does, do you, oof. What are you, we are so so to move, make you go behind, we are so to take a Okay, I think it was, how now, like when, how, 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 guys, how, like when you're feeling, you know, excited, like a woman does when you're feeling excited, like, do, does, does it, the, the, does it, mm. can I hijack you, mm. before I get to that, um, I just also need to, <laughs> I just needed to clarify this. I, yeah. I haven't gotten your question yet, <laughs> but I just wanted to hijack and I'm yeah. sorry. I apologize for interjecting. It's okay. Um, for me, yeah. trans woman is different from, for every trans person. Okay. What a trans woman says about me is I'm not a straight woman mm -hmm. and I find it uh, dangerous for trans women to be like oh yeah i'm a straight woman da, 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 da. Uh, it's very risky mm -hmm. because what we're doing is uh trying to perpetuate a narrative of people thinking that there's something wrong with us mm -hmm. that we want to believe things that do not exist anatomically all right. and in all ways obviously i was born a man yeah. and obviously now i've transitioned into being a trans woman that, that actually doesn't answers mean, it do you Thank understand you that much. doesn't mean now i have periods now i have womb and i yeah. respect we call them straight uh, cis women, mm -hmm. cis women, cis being, I guess, straight. Yeah. But I 100% respect, respect straight women. And now. I hate it when trans women come into women's spaces and they want to overpower them or they want to be better mm -hmm. or they want to disrespect them and all of those things. And I'm like, no, babes, what are you doing? It's very detrimental to our community. Crazy. You are a trans woman. They are straight women and you need to respect that. There's beauty in being yourself as a trans woman and not trying so hard to infiltrate spaces where you know you're trying to change narratives about with that you know that is not factual. For example, yeah. oh no, um, 
there's a lot of stories that are coming up right now where trans women just feel like they're straight women and that gives them now a leverage to disrespect mm -hmm. straight women and i'm like no okay. we are the same babes the your same, safety right? when it's compromised it affects me mm -hmm. my safety when it's compromised it affects, it affects yeah, you that's right. and things like oh no if you're a straight woman if you're a straight man and you don't have you're not attracted to me it makes you transphobic okay I don't like narratives like that because yeah. no people can have that preference. If a straight man is not attracted to you as a trans woman, they're not attracted to you, babes. Because even you as a straight woman, you go through it. Where True. men have preference, you have men that will reject you. Mm -hmm. You have men that will have Girl, interest in come you. come on now. Do you get what I mean? But now when we're starting to put here. labels on people <laughs> and trying to sort of like change some social structure to benefit us, that's where people are going to be like, kill trans people. We don't want these people here. They, you know, educating our kids wrong. Yeah. They're changing the society. And that's not what we're supposed to do. As a trans woman, it is my understanding to be in my space and respect Speaking myself. Speaking of that, killings and everything, Thing. what do you think is the one uh, misconception that people have about you know uh, the transgender uh, community I think the biggest misconception that people have about the trans community mm -hmm. um, I don't know what is it okay we'll think about that and now let's get into the superstar there you are we'll, we'll get back to that because i feel like people really do need to be educated about these of kind course, of things and it will yeah. take forever we'll, we'll yeah. get to that but now let's get into the big superstar that is eno with over two million followers like here somewhere else is like 200k followers like that is a lot now i remember you started well, is a real celebrity <laughs> period dot i don't know I want to, you started off doing like, would you skit on, on, yeah, on, on Instagram? That was, the, the were hilarious. Like, <laughs> funny, <laughs> you understand? Hello, <laughs> Mantra. Hey, <laughs> what, what, what inspired all of that, man? Like, where did it come from? I think my creativity, I was so desperate in coming to the uh, entertainment industry uh, that I, I remember how it started was I would watch like the Queen, mm -hmm. our Queenie Ferguson's, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, hmm, you know, I'm a very good actor or actress <laughs> rather now. I'm drama, good, drama. Yeah, I'm a very good actress. So what I will do when I started the videos, I'll start impersonating Bokoni Ferguson. Mm -hmm. I'll impersonate that characters. I'll watch something and do it and then post it on my Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then people will be like, oh my God, you're such a great actress. Yeah. And then some people will find it, some of the things uh, that I will say in the videos funny because I would write some of my scripts and trying to prepare for this monologues, etc. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, so people love that personality where I'm just funny. Yeah. And that funny essence comes from being from Lesotho and being cool with your Sosoto mm -hmm. and the experiences that you have had as Mosoto. And then people will find them so interesting. They'll be like, oh my God, I can't relate. Yeah, yeah. And that's how my skits came about when I started doing skits and people were finding it funny. Everything, mm -hmm. and people were relate to stories like that and that's how my skits and then they started blowing up yeah they did. i'd have people like boy to twitter use celebrities and be like laughing and be like oh my god there's something about this child mm -hmm. please continue how did but that yeah, that's feel how when you had like you know people like boy t and them you know commenting on your on your on your things <laughs> babes it's boy t <laughs> it, it feels it's yeah, boy t. Hey. like you get what i mean and hey. it felt amazing yeah. people like dj fresh abu bona would also find my videos funny even mm -hmm. when i was impersonating them in the most vulnerable spaces mm -hmm. They took it literally as what I was delivering it as, which yeah. was a joke. And it made me feel so great. And it validated something in me that there's something in you as a person that something you need to look into you. and feather it. And yeah. that's when I started using social media to feather my career beyond and beyond. And I'm, of course, some doors are not going to open for you, yeah, yeah. but you have to soldier on. So obviously from social media, then you moved into the reality TV show space. Mm -hmm, <laughs> baby. Yes. So what was it like? What was, tell us about your show, your show. Um, before that, I mean, before we out to TV, I did a lot of things, guys. Like, mm -hmm. I co-hosted with Tigo Tash and all, all these baby. big people. I'm just saying. Ah, hey, well, you said you did what? Uh, but yeah, I did a lot in the yeah. industry. Google me. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Google Benta, her, guys, Benta. Oh, the reality TV basically just came about wanting to tell people hey, about the LGBTQ. Like, like, like you know, like all things here <laughs> over here, tell it all. Like about the yes, about this. the LGBT community, yeah. just raising awareness about who we are as people. And it was very important that we do that, delivering our our stories through our lives. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. 
MJ, um, mm -hmm. so that people understand her. But when I was about to talk about these are these are human beings like I am. Do you get what I mean? Just to educate people and raise awareness so that people can, you know, be more accepting and understand who we really are. Yeah, and that's how it came about. So it was really just all about you guys making people aware. Through our lives. Yeah, through our so lives. So my experiences, when I get fit down, I mean, of course, one of the first episodes was coming out to my father. Mm -hmm. So obviously, how we get on Tony Israel, you also uh, evoking something in someone who's sitting at home who is gay or bisexual, or lesbian, and trans women, and they don't want to come out because of like mm -hmm. just how the society will be towards them. Do you get what I mean? But when they see me doing that, they resonate with me and they get courage and motivated. Hore, if you know how to fit down to a and which means like I can get out all the strength or or even anyone to live my life freely without having any fear. Okay. All right. Now we I want to ask you something, but before that, I just wanted to take a little break. You know, and. Uh, you have breaks here. Yeah, we do have breaks. Production. Listen now. We got breaks. Listen Love it for you. Love yes, women that break hard. So we're going to go for a break. We'll be right back with Ina right here on Tell It All. Brought to you by Genuine Hype. No joke. And we are back. You still right here on Tell It All podcast. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah, I got the one and only. Let's look, superstardom <laughs> right here. <laughs> you know, like her of things. You know what I'm saying? I used to call myself like her of things. On, what happened on, on, on Twitter? I, I just kind of like stopped using it. But okay, anyway. you are course and things. You okay. know what I'm saying? Hi, boo. Hi, boo. Hi, boo. Hi, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're right here. Tell it all with Eno, and we were just talking about her being on a reality TV show. Like, I've always been interested in mm. knowing, like, how do these things work? Like, okay, you, you, the director will tell you that, oh, no, we're coming to you now, get ready. Or is it like an everyday thing where you know that you're going to be filmed every day? Like, how does it actually work? Hmm, so in terms of, like, filming schedule, mm -hmm. you are advised on what days we'll be filming. Okay. So, for example, you will give your producer your life and mm -hmm. tell them what's happening in your life and what's going on and then they will then advise when we're going to start shooting that and they'll ask you know would you like to shoot that episode that you said you're going to do with your boyfriend and da -da. Yeah. and then yeah that's how it goes um it's not every day i don't wake up <laughs> with cameras yeah. obviously there's uh call times <laughs> yeah. you rap yeah. uh, you know i have some more states more yeah some more i don't know what states keeping up <laughs> no not that and yeah <laughs> That's how the, 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 the scheduling works, but hmm. you wanted to ask what? So I wanted to ask you, like, um, you're very, uh, I mean, you're a very dramatic person. Like, you're expressive, you're animated. Thank like, you. Yes. I don't know if that's a compliment. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> Listen, don't worry. Somebody also said to me that I'm, an, I'm animate. I'm animated. Animated, yeah. Yes. That's that means animated. you're cartoonish. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I'm like, what does that mean? But I express myself too much. Like, I be doing stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, because you, oh, yeah, I feel it. Mm. Oh, yeah, you are low key. Not in a bad way. <laughs> Girl, don't don't play with me right here on my show. What, what animation is that? That's animation. <laughs> you see, apparently. And but anyway, so you you also have the same energy, and I kind I like that about you. Now Aww. I want to know that was it you who was just really just being who you are who you are on the show? Because I've seen a couple of your episodes, or was it uh, what the director tells you to do? Like, do you feel like the directors told you, hey, you must be dramatic so this thing can sell, or it was just naturally you? I'm a, how do I put this? I'm a, I come from different worlds mm -hmm. and I express my personalities differently. I think Tolang has said that on a show. You know that lady personality thing? Yeah. And yeah, for sure. I don't think it's a lot of personalities. It's just your background. Yeah. Uh, there's times where I can get really ghetto because I was raised in the <laughs> streets. You can't come from Lesotho and then you're like, oh, listen, do you get what I mean? Huh. Um, but because of the schools that I've been in, uh, yeah. they've also have influenced my behavior in a certain way. Yeah. So I basically know how to cater for different people. Mm -hmm. um, however, yes, it was truly me portraying 
myself but most things were exaggerated and not all by the production production doesn't tell you what to do mm -hmm. that's purely on you you are responsible for your behavior so i never get when people are like it's the production no babes it's you 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 wanted to do it and you did it it was a um, really big deal that for you, me i've you never had, had my production TV tell show, me what you know? to do yeah. maybe they could ask that we should uh you know maybe someone would discuss i want to talk to talang because i don't like the fact that we have they will give you that platform mm -hmm. of course also why are you on a reality show if you're going to be boring do you get what i mean <laughs> you need to have some element of entertainment you know what i'm saying so for me i always i'm always selfless when it comes to reality shows because people, people are they want. exactly they're paying you know their tv licenses uh -huh. they just you need to watch so is me. the money good so i need to deliver also before we get to that point <laughs> Um, yeah. when I meant that a personality can be exaggerated is that you get into environments that might be unhealthy for you and potentially they trigger you to uh, become a person that you would not necessarily be in your daily lives. Mm -hmm. Maybe like when I'm in a screaming match with someone who's saying certain things because yeah. it will even shock some of my friends. My, my best friend is here. Mm -hmm. My close friends are here. They, they, they can tell you that they'll get surprised when they watch me and be like, you know, that's not you. Do you mm -hmm. get what I mean? Because I've never been in environments where I feel like someone purposely or deliberately provokes me so that they can get a reaction out of me because they know how far I can take it. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, they have to go against Ine because otherwise they will not be relevant on the show. So I don't blame them. Shame cute. Yeah. But anyway, what is the question again? My question... <laughs> <laughs> wow, you can... You can... <laughs> I know, I know. Look, this is why you're here. This is exactly why you're here. My question is, uh, is the money in there, in the whole reality TV thing? This, in this, this money thing, because now there's things that are happening um, I mean, yeah. in the industry now, and money is becoming a big conversation, especially yes. after this whole penny 100%. thing. 100%. Shout out to her, what a talented woman she is. You know, uh, so tell me about it. <laughs> they pay me good. Mm -hmm. I won't lie. Yeah. I love my job. I, well, I love my job except for what it comes with on when we shooting mm -hmm. when you start feeling like you're a target yeah, yeah, it yeah. becomes boring because you like people become very disingenuous mm -hmm. they're not becoming their real self because it's like damn so you're just gonna cause drama for the sake of it if drama mm -hmm. comes then let, let it happen organically mm -hmm. don't create it because you're gonna get a rise when you're yeah, creating yeah. it uh so that's the only thing that i have found uncomfortable with but to be honest i've so been very is, treated very well with mm -hmm. Moja love uh, i mean even the last season that ended almost in december i was the only person back mm -hmm. it means that they believed in they me do, yeah uh, however i feel like also there's always room to you know work around uh but um you know increasing salaries and stuff mm -hmm. like that of course and for me they have increased my salaries they will increase my salaries when necessary mm -hmm. sometimes obviously you being patient and feel like damn it should have been times five okay <laughs> but i'm a type Money. of person that i also like proving myself first yeah, yeah. so that when I As do bring an argument of hey, lang, no lang hanya, hey, then at least there's to results. Do you get what I mean? Great. But for me, I was good. I mean, I was able to pay for my apartment in Joburg. Mm -hmm. I was able to get a car. I was able to, you know, basically uh, cater for my needs. And I feel like that's what you need in life. Yeah. But now, obviously, I get to the point where I'm like, oh, no, I can't be at the same place in life. Mm -hmm. Forget that double store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that becomes another conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, now we'll get into that conversation. First, I just want to still <laughs> <finish>. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one about, you know, what the feel and and I'm just <laughs> <laughs> you can't do anything. You know, like, okay, here, and I have a comfortable life and, yeah. you know, watching a double story and stuff like that. I just want to now finish up with this whole thing, yeah, 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 you know, filming and everything like that. Like, how is it for you? You said, you mentioned that there are times when you wanted to do some st certain things, but you couldn't because the cameras is all over you and stuff like that. Do you ever feel like there are things that you want to do, but then you just... You know, stop yourself because you're like, yo, ish, Hannah, I'm on TV and stuff like that. Like, do you ever do things no, like that? No, the way I'm so good with reality TV, and I'm not blowing my own horn, but also, let me know when I'm on TV, when I'm on TV, when I'm on My production, uh, my production manager will be, be like, you know, so we want to know, when you shoot, um, do, do, you do you see the cameras? Like, do or you, do, do you mm. disappear? Like, do you consider that there's people around you? Because to them, what she meant was... Mm -hmm. It's almost like you forget that there's people around. <laughs> yeah. And that's me because in that moment, I'm being real. Yeah. I don't care if there's like... So you would basically... Now your argument would be that reality TV is basically uh, a reflection of real life. Hey, yeah. Hey. Okay. You will never act in a way that you are ah, not. Because okay. that would be very foreign to you. No, but I don't Not wanna, entirely. Not entirely. But... Maybe a, a young for 40%. Because, I mean, there are sets. There's, you know, everything. Yeah, but even now I got to action, 
Yeah. That is still you behaving the way that you want to behave. Nobody gave you a script. Arguably, So yeah. do you get what I mean? Mm. It's you portraying yourself the way... It's like here, we're having a conversation as a camera, yeah. but we're being real. Hey, camera. Do you get what I mean? It doesn't mean because it's a camera, we are not real. True. Oh, it's not real. Okay. It still is real. It's just that there's, hello, you guys can start talking now, and mm. we talk. They're not like, you know, ask this person about... <laughs> no, do you get yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. it's what I want to say. But okay. obviously, it's a reality TV. It's TV. Mm. There's things that we need to respect, like commercials, there's, like time. So there's some things that will be omitted out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I was just mm -hmm. reacting to the drama. So you, you get pissed because you're like, damn, yeah. you know, why did it cut out there? Because people complain about the producer about editor in to but it's a temple fella. Two, I mean it is a reality show what's selling. It's controversy. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what I mean? But most of the time they also show the positive things. True. But hang out there's because of time. Do you get what I mean? So mm -hmm. you always have to make sure but letting housewives that will make sure. It means you're not sense. being real. Do you get what I mean? All because right. now you're starting to curate what you have to say and what and what not. Okay then. So now moving on to the next question that I have for you, uh, in terms of you know being wanting a comfortable life and all of that stuff, and is that the reason why you? left south africa because you just said to me that you were able to you know pay for your own apartment your lifestyle and everything why did you are you back here now mm. or you're here just in on visitation terms i at least i was very honest mm -hmm. in in my last season of mm -hmm. the show i went through a lot of shit okay. as i am people have seen me fight with my families at this point you guys know my life yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah true <laughs> Do you get what i mean yes. however i did leave also the show i there was things that were happening especially during shootings mm -hmm. that i was unsatisfied with not not more on like the production side but mostly mm -hmm. the cast people because it would be annoying because i'm so real and sometimes i find it so difficult when people come on set and they want to be something that they're not okay. and then they started targeting they start targeting you it's not a reality show anymore mm -hmm. there's something curated and people can tell when something is curated True. so things like that would annoy me i feel like people would come on the show and be like mm, we're gonna wait for you to slip or we're gonna target you know do you get what i mean so you am felt I fully targeted basically. am i fully absolved from some behaviors absolutely not i make mm -hmm. mistakes and that's why in every episode where i've made a mistake you'll see me take accountability except for the part where apparently i was supposed to go to kz and and peace and sisters because i made someone mad but i see collab and i'll never do that but um, besides that... <laughs> You're not a, an, an ancestor person, basically. It's we'll get to that. But besides that, uh, when I left the show was because of the, the, the frustration of the shooting there. But the channel has been very nice to me. Mm -hmm. um, they have been very kind to me. I cannot complain. Mm -hmm. Where, as it stands, I don't think I would go back, even though sometimes I'm like to Mr. Obri, Hey, Mr. Obri, mm -hmm. that money, please. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes when, it, when you're not getting you, the money that you used would to you get, you're like, you're financially Ooh. comfortable right now? Uh, I'm like, uh, sleep with the, I'm financially. How do we say I'm financially over stretch? Hi, bro. I'm good. You're right. I'm good. Mm -hmm. From where I was on yeah. the show, ooh. That was very uh, talking bad. about where you were Oof. on the show uh there were like people talking about how uh you left in, in, a, in a very bad space yeah. like you had to sell your stuff how you many have to... i done that in, in all my seasons yeah yeah but not this i don't think this time around no uh but it was more of the business decisions that i've made it mm -hmm. that i've made rather <laughs> made it who <laughs> <laughs> were <laughs> that I've made yeah. that became very that came with so much detrimental consequences. But it's business. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur, you understand that. And because my businesses were affected, it affected my livelihood. And mm -hmm. but I've went through it. I've had people have seen me have money, spend it like crazy on the show. They've seen me be honest when some you know, things will. Be I think I, I love that about you. Come on, cheers with me, chat. Bring me here's your water. Toast to that. I like the fact that you're so open about everything that's going on, and mm -hmm. I, I love it. Please go on. I appreciate that very much. Excuse me. <laughs> I can't be coffee like a bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was oh, no. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway, um. <laughs> Sana, you uh uh, we're gonna be here the whole. Day. I don't want to mess up my makeup. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, my. Hey, hey, hey. Where were we back? <laughs> Can we please go on? <laughs> Where were we? Um, uh, oh, yes. Yeah. 
I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. I think things hey. started going downfall for me when I lost my mother. Nothing ever made sense. Things, I'm so sorry about uh, that. scenes, mm -hmm. uh, all the efforts that I'm putting in, they just not aligning. Yeah. And I have to be honest and tell people that this is what I'm going through. S being a celebrity, it's a <sighs> status. Being a human being, it's yeah. you. Do you get what I mean? And people need to separate that mm. from who you are because people believe just because you're a celebrity, you're probably living in a big house. I don't even have a car right now. Thank mm. you, Bestie, for bringing me to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> <Bestie. laughs> Do you understand what yeah. I mean? Because I'm still dealing with... I love people like DJ's Boo when they speak about their business experiences because he would say, oh, well, I'm in dabs because of this, this business. Mm. And whatever. And I've went through that. Yeah. And I'm dealing with some of those things. And it's like, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, what you try to do is solve matters in your life and try to be good. Mm -hmm. But I did that. I really did uh, yo, alleviate a lot of my issues in my life. Yeah, and I'm yeah. very grateful to God. I think one thing that I love about myself is that I'm rooted in, in God and mm. I could never forget God. And I need to understand that the seasons. But I mean, I was a young kid who yeah. uh, had a single parent who did everything for her. My, my mom did everything for me. I didn't have to lift my thing. I was a kid in school mm -hmm. driving. I, had, so I would have my laptops at the age of seven and yeah. things like that. Do you get what I mean? So when I lost my mom, I was like, oh, okay. Do you mm -hmm. get what I mean? What do I do now? And I try and I try and I try and I try and nothing is working out because I'm so used to getting and spending the way I want to spend. Mm -hmm. So obviously I'll also take accountability. Then you have to grow up, yes. And, and I had life to grow happened. Up. And life happened. I yeah. mean, you, but know, you know what? what I'm they grateful. Say that, you know, if you've had it, then you, you can get it again. Yes. And this is what I'm doing. Yes, yes. Right and now, I'm, I'm in I'm my, glad. hey, let me tell you, I'm in my innovation era. Yeah. I don't want to lie. Focus, girl. And you asked if that's the reason I left in Joburg. I love my country. And people think, you know, we I mean, of course, I might not, not be where I am before. Honey, and if I wanted to be there, I will be there. I'm yeah, a pretty yeah. girl. I get 100%. a lot of men that will be like, oh, no. I remember and when I left. Talented. When I left. Well, there, was a, a there, there was a few men that were like that I will talk to and when I tell them I would even be like no don't worry I'll pay your apartment I'll da, 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 da. Oh. but I'm just not that kind of girl and also mm. I grew up with a woman or I was raised by a woman who was super independent yeah, yeah. and for me I always believe that I can get my own do you get what I mean mm -hmm. I don't want to be a, a kind of girl that's reliant on a man's finances or what other people do for me or going to some extreme things mm -hmm. that I don't want to do but I love my country beyond that I really I just felt like I wanted to be here I've never really gotten uh, mm -hmm. A chance or opportunity to spend time high, get a care, mm -hmm. do. And I, I feel and like no people love you. And this is, I hear yeah, Afro, they this really is not do. a jab at you mm -hmm. at all, but I get people who be like, Why are you in a country? You never hear a South African asking another South African, What are you doing in South Africa? Do you get what I mean? Exactly. Because they love their country and they're only mm -hmm. able to get where they are mm -hmm. because of that love that they have and even for each other. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get anywhere if we feel like every time we have talents, we need to escape. Mm -hmm. Of which, that's what you have to do. But at the end of the day, do what you got to do. But no, as long as you think, come back you know and what? lift think, your country, yes, I think you know, it's important I think it's a lesson that a lot of people, that the most uh, our creatives have learned. Like, yeah. I'm one of them. I mean, at some point, I was also, you know, doing pretty well for myself on radio and then I decided, you know what, I need more. Do you understand? I want and it's okay to need more. Yes, Nothing wrong with that. Even if you want to leave, you know. Yes. But also and people need to understand. And got really hard that side. I decided, me, you know yeah. what? Not baby girl. Go back home. And I came back home and I built this awesome, awesome, talented, all blue couch vibes. Yeah. And I have you and on I'm it so now. so proud of Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank but for you. me, it wasn't really anything that has to do with hardship. Okay. I think in Jobek, I've went through so many turmoils. Yeah, tell and me. And I've... My friend is there. She's mm -hmm. seen me pick up myself in Jobek, falling in Jobek, picking yeah. myself up in Jobek. So mm -hmm. I'm able to do that in Jobek. Mm -hmm. But for me, I just wanted to come back to my country mm -hmm. to come solidify what we have in the as an entertainment industry. Yeah. As are on us now. Anyone sure. that's leaving now, they're leaving the diamond behind. Sure. You get what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, there's so much potential, you know? 100%. You have get it all the strength and mm -hmm. all the, the appetite that you have to get to make a name for yourself. Yeah. Take it back to your country. Do you get what I mean? Besides it being peaceful, because I'm a very peaceful person. I like my space. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there's so much potential with the entertainment industry and i haven't fully left south africa yeah. it's just the balance i need to be here and that's then, yeah. amazing man and i know i've seen that you you know you've said some things about how you would really love to you know have a hand in the of the growth of the industry yeah here. and I, I think that's really really amazing and i think you should really really go yeah for it i mean that's the reason why we have here. people like connie ferguson but it's mm -hmm. they had to be like i'm going to be the first person to make a difference okay. in this. and look how far they went now you know what i mean let's talk about how they now you're back Right, and then um, you had you I came back okay. with uh, you came back with. I'm with, here. Yes, you here in the suit, right? Like fifth. I, I would. Oh, like you're to say, in in between. Yeah. You had, I can wake up literally. Ask her. I can literally wake up tomorrow. And let's be like, go. 
All right, no, I'm that's gone. that's that's a, that's. But possible. I'm here for now, and I've been for a little while. I think mm -hmm. I got here in October. You had your own uh, beauty salon, mm -hmm. and you had your own what do you call this? A uh, skincare uh, uh, range. And I haven't seen them in a long time. Are they still operating? Absolutely Are they still functional? Not. Absolutely uh, not. I mean, I've done so many businesses. Even from the age of 19, owning a restaurant. You have uh, had a restaurant when mm -hmm. you were 19? Yep, in Off Where Cliff. was it based? Uh, Joe Brick Babes. In a very suburban area. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding, but like, yeah, yeah I'm kidding. The way that I Oh, I get you. I get you. I get you. Um, um, uh, restaurant, mm -hmm. T-shirts, my own merchandise. My own online boutique, my own skincare, um, my own camera. My own, you know, I've done a lot, friend. I've done a lot. Of crazy. That's nice. <laughs> That's really. And impressive. then the beauty salon and the beauty salon. Ooh, Sana, I wish. What happened to it? Because it was. It was, it was just really nice. making um, prestigious and everything. Mm, mm. It was just making financial decisions that were not making sense. You, you, you know when you think you know but you don't know? Mm -hmm. that w that's what happened, you know? Because I had so much potential in um, making a lot of money here and da, 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 da. and people were very supportive but when it comes to Lesotho, hey, Sana, if you're saying that the nails are going to cost 500, what the hell? We're not mm -hmm. doing that. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? And because of that, it brought me so much detriment to just my livelihood and um, my business and everything. I just got discouraged and demotivated and I was like, you know what? I'm, and I spoke about it in detail on you the did. show. You yeah. did. And now also there's another thing that I saw on your wall. You spoke about how you feel that um, maybe I will say influencers or I will say celebrities or I, I don't know, popular people in the country who are in the entertainment industry are, are how do you say, to themselves. Like, in a, in a way. You say, you say something like that on your post. And I wanted... Sometimes I need to remember that I have millions of followers. Yeah, you do, girl. I say things on, on my too. mind. We got our eyes on it. No, because sometimes I say things on my mind and I don't think and you people will react. I want you to people give me an incident or an example of what happened ah, that made babes, you... Come I'll on now. Yeah. You, drama. Know, you, know, you don't have to say <laughs> the name of the person. Yeah. Just give me, like, what made you feel that... But, well, so to who are influencers and stuff like that. By Not all of them. For example, yeah. you're an amazing person. <laughs> um, but, like... <laughs> I just feel like in so to the industry, we, I'm praying for us to go forward, but it starts with us as individuals. And we need to strengthen our connections. Do you mm -hmm. get what I mean? And I'm not desperate to be friends with influencers from Lesotho, but it's a thing of we're in the same, we're like colleagues, mm -hmm. you guys, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like what's happening in the industry of South Africa, you'll see Mitlali collaborating with Bona Lady and stuff yeah, like true. that. You will see I'm a piano artist, I will probably Cooper, focus the creating that entourage, and it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's what grows the industry. I don't think I'm a piano would have been where it is if it mm -hmm. wasn't for that strong connection. Yeah, so when sure. I go to social gatherings and then I'll greet someone and they're not so welcoming, mm. it's like, ugh, you know, I couldn't eat, like, why? Mm. Do you get what I mean? Because <laughs> I need. there's really no reason. And it's not to say that people must praise me when I arrive. No, I don't want that. More than anything, my social status, it's not my personality. I don't go around saying, hey, guys, I'm a much alive. Mm. Or I don't go around to mall doing this, staring at people so that they can be like, you know, yeah, I don't know. I mind my business most, most of the time. I'm in my mask. I'm wearing my hoodie. Yeah. So it, it's not a thing of... I want people to be like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. but if I'm coming to me, I'm like, hey, I've seen you. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you mind. Mm -hmm. It's like. It's, it's a bit disturbing. Weird, you know. And there's some people that also have made. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm going into details, but like you I get, want the details. You'll get people the that thing, I where you be like, oh, no, let's, what, work, let's work, let's work, let's yeah. work, let's do this. And then next thing, the thing that you guys say you're going to do, it's like non-existent and you see them just you know, doing it on their own and then you're like, mm. not so what's easy. going on? So it's just the reception. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes some things don't have to be with actions. It's just the energy you can feel when you are welcomed at certain yeah. spaces or mm -hmm. with certain people. And that's what I've gathered from some of the influencers of Lesotho. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't all have to be friends, yeah. but we have to acknowledge that we're in the same industry yeah. and we need each other. If I'm an True. influencer and I am working with Vodacom, mm -hmm. I need y'all mm -hmm. to comment and share my post so that 100%. it can increase the engagement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to isolate myself and think that I'm better mm -hmm. because I have millions of followers, because yeah. I've worked with who's and who's in the industry, because I, <clears throat> I'm not going to get anywhere. Okay. Now let's get to the interesting, let's play a little game, yeah? Uh, a little game, a little game, a little game, 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 game. I'm gonna make you know, you, when you, on reality shows, we don't like games because they always people get very messy. Ah, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I'm not gonna get messy, don't worry. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Look, um, 
uh, let's go in, 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 in terms of like a, a female artist. Like, who do you think is out there for you doing the most? Like, who do you, who do you... Lesotho? Yes. Um, I would say my friend, because she keeps pointing us out, but she's not in the industry anymore. So <laughs> We're talking she, about people that are putting work fixed, out there. She fixed that. Yes. <laughs> uh, female artists, that's hmm. a thing. We don't know each other, and I'm very guilty of that. Okay. And I really can't bring, I can't come up with a lot of names of like female artists that I will say that I'll listen to. Yeah. They really aren't because mm -hmm. I think also there isn't a lot of females here. I mean, you only released one song and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shading you. <laughs> this is my show, girl. I'm not shading you. Yeah. But, there, but you would agree there isn't a lot of female artists <laughs> besides yourself, the rap Irish. Um, mm. I don't know. Yeah. But I do have. My favorite female DJ in the country. Nettle, of course. Oh, Bye. Shout out to Love. Oh, okay. with her. Love her energy. Love her swag. Love the way she.